Good morning, everybody. Hope everyone's okay this morning and you managed to send me through your work yesterday. Well done if you did and brilliant use of coordinating sentences for those children who managed to use the different joining words in your sentences and write about chapter one. So in today's lesson, we're going to use points and evidence using the text to tell a little bit more information about the story. Now, just before we move on, yesterday I mentioned that um, throughout the book, it's very, very difficult to find out the pages that we are talking about. So here you can see an example of a page from the book. And I mentioned asking an adult to help you to write the page numbers in. Now, you can see here that I have been through my story and I've written my page numbers in because it just makes going through the book a little bit easier because on quite a number of pages, they don't have any page numbers. And when I'm saying turn to this page or look at this page, it makes it very, very difficult to know where, which one I'm talking about. So what I would like you to do this morning is pa uh, pause your video and have a go at reading up to page 295, page 295, which looks like this. It doesn't ha have the number on it. So like I said, if you want to, just write it in the corner just to help you and remember where you are up to. So I want you to independently read to either yourself quietly or to a, an adult in your house up to page 295. And then we're going to do some writing about it. So make sure as you are reading it, you are paying really good attention to the story. So have you all managed to read it? We're actually going to read a bit of the story together. So I would like you now to turn in your book to page number 285. Now this starts with chapter three and it's back at the beehive. So can you take a second now, if you need to pause the video till you've found it, find that page and you're going to read along whilst I read with you. So chapter three. Back at the beehive, Queen Bee was getting worried. Little Bee had been gone for hours now and something had to be done. She called all her bees together. Right, forget pollen gathering, forget honey making. Little Bee is lost and we've got to go and find him before dark. Else he'll get cold and die. Follow me. Old Farmer Rafferty was milking Auntie Grace and the, the dreamy-eyed cow when he heard the bees coming. There they go, he chortled over his milk pail. Buzz my little beauties, make me my honey money. And then he began to sing as he often did when he was happy. He sang in a crusty, croaky kind of voice and he made it up as he went along. along. Honey bee, honey bee, honey bee, be my honey bee, be my honey bunch, be my queen bee. Out on the clover field, Diana the silly sheep was rolling on her back to scratch her itches when she saw a great swarm of bees coming straight towards her. <coughs> she struggled to her feet and ran off towards the pond as fast as her legs could carry her. No one at all, no one was at all surprised when she jumped right in. That's what she always did when there were bees about. How zip, scud, splish, splosh, splash. As usual, it was Jigger, the almost always sensible sheepdog, who had to pull her out. They can't sting you in the water. That's what my mother told me. Silly sheep. And some mothers do have them, thought Albertine from her island in the pond. It's just bees buzzing, nothing to worry about. That's my mum. She's so calm in a crisis. Best keep your head down if you ask me, said upside and down. So the two white ducks that no one could tell apart upside down themselves in the pond and stayed there all day long. Captain, the great brown cart horse who loved everyone and whom everyone loved, looked out over the clover field. There's an awful lot of bees out there. I wonder what they're up to. They aren't making honey, are they, dear? Yes, honey. I don't like the look of, of this at all. There are too many of them and they're coming this way. The pigs like honey, mummy. I shouldn't be surprised if they do, said the pigs. And sure enough, the sky above them suddenly darkened and the humming became a droning and the droning became a roaring. The bees were right over their heads now and they sounded angry, very angry indeed. 
And that is where we're going to stop today because we're going to use the story to write about what we have found out in the section of the story that we have just read. So you're going to write some sentences to tell me why you think the bees are angry, why you think the bees are cross and why you think the bees are swarming. So using the story, well, the, the bit of the story we've just read. So from the start of chapter three, all the way up to page 295, see if you can fill in those sentences to tell me what you think about the bees and why they are acting so strangely and why they are chasing all the different animals. You could also, if you wanted to, talk about how the animals are feeling. So all the animals have different feelings, especially the sheep who decided to jump into the pond. OK, so have a think about the text. Think about the points that you're going to make and the evidence that we can find from the text. So what evidence have we got that that's the reason why the bees are angry or the bees are cross or the bees are swarming? So have a go. See how you get on. And I can't wait to see your brilliant work. Take care, everyone, and I will see you all tomorrow.